Hey everybody. So you may uh, recognize this lock because I used it in an earlier video uh, where I demonstrated a, a technique that I called zipping, which uh, just involved running this half diamond very, very quickly along the bottoms of the pins to try to jostle, the, jostle them into place as a form of simple raking. Uh, so we're going to try that again because this lock has gotten some upgrades uh, since then. And that just is not going, though we do seem to have a little bit of a false set now. But we're going to drop that. We're going to keep that tension tool in place, but now we're going to go in with our uh, flat-tipped hook. And we're going to try doing this again a bit more methodically. So that feels like it was pin 6, uh, probably pin 4. probably pin 2, and there's pin 1, and now we're getting a bit of a false set and counter rotation from pin 1, but I think, yeah, pin 1 seems to be set now. Let's try pin 2 again, 3, 4, oh, 5 is finally giving us something, so we're going to Go very light on the tension because we are trying to get some counter rotation and just let the uh, security pins work their way over their little uh, rims. And you'll see the, the plug just sort of bouncing back and forth going between a, a, a full set which with these pins will vary quite significantly. And oh, look at that. And we just lost something. Let's try again, working our way up and down. Pin one yet again needs to be reset. Pin two. Giving us a false rotation. I think I just tapped pin 3 into a deeper false set. And let's get it again. And now we're open. So, let's see, how are we doing? Three minutes? Okay, not bad. Uh, let's try to get this guy open before this gets too long. get the this clutter out of the way. Uh, we do have a key for it. I've shown it to you before. It's not the most difficult bidding in the world, uh, but just in case I mess this up, we'll be able to get it open again. And uh, got a follower for it. So let's just make sure that yeah, hopefully we're not going to drop any pins doing this. Okay, so uh, now I haven't done anything to the uh, key pins, so we're just going to have standard, standard all the way through. And there isn't any real counter milling or anything, just honest wear on those. But the interesting stuff is going to be up here. So let's uh, take a look at that. Don't want to. have any pins flying out of our face, so...
six. There we go. Get the spring out of the way. So, let's see what we have here. Uh, in chamber six, we had a mushroom pin. There you go. And you can see it just sort of tapers slowly at the middle, gives a little bit of a slope, and then comes to that sharp ledge. Uh, in chamber five, we had a homemade spool pin. You can see it narrows. It's not as deep or aggressive as some, but still pretty decent work there. Uh, number four, this is one of the new pin designs uh, that we have taken to calling a Lulu uh, because it resembles an old uh, nuclear weapon uh, of a similar shape. And if you can make it out, oh boy, if I can never get this thing to focus. Come on, come on. There we go. You can see it just has this one deep angled groove right here near the end. Uh, number three is another, uh, well it was another deeper uh, homemade spool. This is a homemade attempt at a uh, double spool or barrel pin, if the camera will ever cooperate so that you can likely see it. There you go. It sort of bulges out in the middle, but has a definite thinness to it there, around the middle. And number one is another example of this new uh, Lulu pin design. Come on. There you go. And you can see, again, it has one very deep groove and we're still playing around with the design sort of testing it out but I have to say that the way those behave has been very interesting so uh, until next time have fun and happy picking